author, Alan M. Hornblum. He has written Acres of Skin, Human Experiments at the Holmesburg Prison in Pennsylvania. This is a true story of abuse and exploitation in the name of medical science. Mad science. You know we are right here in the belly of the beast. Harvard, MIT. We're talking about schools and institutions Brown. that definitely practice. Um, <laughs> are they practicing or are they actually doing it? They do medical experiments on us. So much so that we have... Um, 76 biotechnology companies and 6.4 square miles of the city of Cambridge. Can you imagine 76 biotechnology companies? How important is in the nation's capital for the Human Genome Project, the Whitehead Institute, right in Kendall Square? affiliated with the Massachusetts Institute of Technology? Are we all science experiments? Well, let's talk to do Dr., uh, not Dr., but Alan M. Hornblum. Alan, you with me? Yes, sir. How you doing, all right? Hey, I'm doing real great. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your schedule to be with us and share uh, this information about... No I'm delighted you show interest in this subject. Oh, definitely. I'm sorry I'm so late on getting uh, getting up in the mix. What's up with... Uh, how long ago did you write this book? Well, uh, it took me five years. I started the research in 1993, and the book came out in 1998, and it made a tremendous amount of uh, publicity. The book was featured on Good Morning America, the evening news with uh, Dan Rather. It was on CNN. It was on the BBC around the world. Uh, it received a tremendous amount of publicity. It probably had an article in every newspaper in the country. And that's what happens when the revelations come out that for many years, in this case 25 years, thousands of Philadelphians were being used as guinea pigs by uh, a very prominent doctor hooked up with the University of Pennsylvania. Uh, he entered the protocols, the, uh, the scientific studies of all sorts of private and public sector organizations running the gamut from R.J. Reynolds Tobacco to the CIA, and this went on from the early 50s to the mid-70s. So it was quite a revealing story, and it did uh, make a lot of news, and I actually was on a book tour in Boston, uh, but as they, we say in Philadelphia, better late than never, R.A. Hey, 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 thanks a lot. I appreciate that. That. But um, now, you wrote this book in what year again? Came out in 1998. Came out in 1998, and it's now the year 2002. Now, these experiments uh, that you researched and investigated were conducted from what years? From 1951 to 1974. If you would like, I'll go into the origin of it for you and how it evolved. Uh, please do. How did you uh, get on to this particular subject? Well, in fact, I was a graduate of uh, Villanova Graduate School in 1971, and I decided I wanted to do some good, wholesome work, and I decided I would go into the education field, and I started working at Holmesburg Prison in the Philadelphia prison system. And as soon as I walked into uh, the prison, I saw dozens and dozens of inmates with bandages and all sorts of uh, medical uh, dressing on their arms and legs and back, and I couldn't understand what it was all doing there. I mean, was the prison that unsafe? Had there been a riot? Was there a knife fight in the prison yard? Uh, the next day, I asked the guard what the story was. He said, oh, that's nothing. That's just uh, the perfume experiments for the University of Pennsylvania. And I was totally shocked by that answer, and it didn't make sense to me at all. Uh, but the guard said, yeah, it's been going on for a while. It's no big deal. I obviously peppered the guard. 
with a lot of uh, questions about the experiments. Was it just perfume? Were they dangerous? Did anybody get hurt? How much did the inmates make, if anything? And he answered as best he could. He really didn't know that much, and he basically said, you know, in his view, the inmates were crazy. They were desperate for money. They were willing to do anything, and this was the best way to make a buck while you were incarcerated. I continued to ask the inmates questions. Did it hurt? Were they fearful? Things like that. They said they were, but, you know, it was being coordinated by the University of Pennsylvania, very prominent Ivy League school like Harvard. Uh, the doctor said there was no problem with the tests. Everything was being taken care of. And as I said before, the inmates were desperate for a buck. So this is what they did. I always hoped and expected as the years went by that there would be some medical ethicist, some journalist, some historian who would look into the situation and write the definitive study because I knew in my heart there was something wrong with these experiments. That book never happened. By the early 90s, I am now working in the Philadelphia Sheriff's Office as a chief of staff, but I could not quite forget the specter of those experiments. So I started to spend some time tracking down inmates, talking to them about their recollections of the Holmesburg experiments. And I found myself going to state prisons, finding guys on the street, collecting their stories, and it just further whet my appetite. The inmates did not know what they were taking, what they were being injected with, what they were swallowing. Some said they had problems for many years afterwards but they were never really told what they were being exposed to. I then started to track down the doctors, the medical technicians, the nurses, the people who worked on the other end of the experiments, and a funny thing, Brother R.A., they would not talk. They were scared to death. Some of them hung up the phone on me. Some said they would only talk if they had an attorney present. Some even pleaded with me not to get into the subject. So that obviously confirmed my fearful notion that there was something very untoward about these experiments. Well, let me let me jump in real quick, Alan. Now, we're talking about using prisoners from, uh, I guess, around the nation in medical experiments. Now, what is the demographic of the people in prison? Well, currently, uh, it is this Proportionally African American, uh, but back when the experiment started in the early 50s, uh, the prison systems in the country were overwhelmingly white. In Philadelphia, uh, the vast majority of prison, prisoners in the county jail were white. Blacks were a minority. That starts to change in the mid-60s as blacks become a greater proportion of the jail and then a dominant portion of the jail to what we have today, where African Americans and Latinos probably represent between 80 and 85 percent of the Philadelphia jail system. Mm, mm, mm. Now, now let me let me shift really quickly to your book. In the beginning of your book, you list the Nuremberg Code. Correct. Now, for those that may not know too much about the Nuremberg Code or the Nuremberg Trials, can you? Just elaborate um, with some, you know, definitive details that you basically pull out in your book. The Nuremberg Code is the classic statement of principles that came down at the end of the Second World War by American jurists, American judges who were trying Nazi doctors for the horrendous experiments they performed on concentration camp prisoners during the 1940s at Bergen-Belsen, at Auschwitz, at Dachau, institutions like that. Some really incredibly horrible experiments 